Well, All right, we're, we're starting, guy. <laughs> you can stay. You don't have to leave. All right, the improvement service committee will come to yeah. come to order. We'll note that uh, those present are Alderman Vandalist, Alderman Nenig, Alderman Weary, uh, Alderman Nicholson. Chairman Nicholson is uh, excused. Hopefully, he'll be here later, but he is excused right now. And can I have an approval of the minutes from October 11th? Uh, I'll move to approve the minutes uh, with an amendment to note that Alderman Weary was excused rather than absent at the last meeting. Right. Is that acceptable? Yes. Motion in a second. Then I can Vanderlis. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, number two is approval of the agenda. Please we'll approve. Second. A motion in a second to approve. Um, Alderman Stoyer had asked that number five be moved up to the first item after number two. It'll be a short one, I believe. That's all right. Yeah. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number five, consideration with possible action. On request by Alderman Stoyer to look into the possibility of the fire department selling their property at 130 North Henry Street with the further possibility of combining the fire department garage with the west side department of public works garage. You have the longest communication. <laughs> All the words are spelled here. right, too. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. I can be. Uh, anyhow, I just had a, a meeting with uh, Director Grenier and with uh, Chief Litton and Assistant Chief Gosling of the fire department. And we spoke about this at length. And um, that I believe, and you know, Steve, you can help me on this. I think you said in 2007 that there had been a study done. It was 2006, right? Or six. And and talking about efficiencies of maybe combining uh, fire and DPW garages. Um, after the, the conversation that I had with all three, uh, I was fairly content with, with the answers that they gave to me as far as efficiencies and. The thought I had, had, I had thought of taking the building at 130 North Henry, you know, the fire department building, selling it, you know, recouping costs, you know, getting getting the city back in, back in the city coffers, having the fire department garage possibly move into the west side garage, but they were saying that as as things are now, there would be very little room uh, at each facility or at that facility to incorporate that. I'm not saying that you know this is completely done by any means. I was trying to do this at budget time, you know, just to try to get a, a handle on that. And uh, after speaking to them, uh, I, you know, Steve was saying he has 11 mechanics. Fire department has two mechanics. They're both. They're all very, very busy. As is, I was thinking that maybe there would be some cross-referencing, if you will, between departments. Maybe there are certain vehicles that you know you can use the same equipment. Um, I think that's still to be determined maybe down the road, but and Steve can add anything you'd like to that. But I was satisfied enough with the conversation and my request would be to receive it and place on file. Questions from the committee? I move to receive and place on file and request. Okay. Motion by Alderman Nenig, second by Alderman Vanderlees to receive and place on file. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Number three, consideration of possible action on request on behalf of property owners within the Legends District to restrict parking day of Packer Games, Packers Game, <laughs> Packer Games, with a recommendation from the Traffic, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Commission to consider sidewalk installation within the Legends District. Director. Well, this is something that came before the committee last month. Uh, actually, I believe pa uh, Traffic Bike Ped Commission um, received and placed on file the request to restrict the parking and further made a recommendation that INS <coughs> uh, consider a sidewalk study um, within the Legends District to determine whether or not sidewalks would actually be necessary over there. And what we informed you uh, at our last meeting was that um, we did a, uh, an inspection over in the area and did confirm much as we suspected that on game days, people are walking in the streets because there are no sidewalks. So it, it was our recommendation at that time that if you wanted to correct the safety problem, the appropriate measure to do would be to order the sidewalks installed. So nothing has changed since that time. This was uh, held until this meeting. Um, I don't have a record on, on who made the request hold, but it was held until this meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't think there's any additional new information that's that's come to light. 
if you did install sidewalks, could you extend the on-street parking area? Yes, yes, there would be additional <coughs> additional opportunity for the current no parking Packer game day to be removed, and it would be that would result in streets within the Legends District being consistent with the residential neighborhoods north of Lombardi. Uh, what we have found, it seems, it seems a little counterintuitive, but having the parking on the street actually slows the traffic down because it feels, it's traffic climbing measure, makes the, the, the street feel uh, narrower. Um, it puts cars where cars belong and then puts the point of conflict or potential points of conflict between uh, pedestrians and motorists where they are expected and that is at uh, intersections and at driveways where driveways empty out onto the public street. Any other questions or comments from the committee? Is this <laughs> your district, Chris? Uh, it's actually Alderman Zimmer's. I was hoping he would have stayed for oh. this one. It sits right next to mine. But okay. I mean, I go over there a lot and 99% of the year there's little or no foot traffic. There's really pull into those businesses and they walk in and out, but they don't walk around the district. Most of the time there's nobody walking around, so you'd hate to put in sidewalks for something for less than a percent. I don't know. <laughs> I'm surprised, have any of the business owners been in touch with you, Steve, or? I, I have not spoken to, to anybody about this. Um, and again, I, I think I've told you folks this in the past, I, I'm blessed with the ability or the, the the position where I can maintain a narrow focus. I, I don't have to really consider other things. So if I want to look at this strictly from a from a safety perspective, which I that that's where this recommendation comes from. Um, if we want to correct the safety problem, the safety issues get pedestrians out of the street where they don't belong and put them up in the, uh, on the terrace in the sidewalk where they do belong. The terraces have always been planned for sidewalk, and I know some discussion came at our last meeting that yes, but the sidewalk is supposed to be installed when it's needed. Well, if we got a safety issue with people walking in the streets ten times a year, I would say ten times a year is needed. Okay, so I do tend to look at things in black and white, and I, I don't have to consider all the other things that you guys do. So I'm giving you a, a safety-based recommendation. My recommendation is very, very narrow focused. I, I will tell you that up front. All the monuments that are along Legends Lane, or Can Canadale Run, sorry, it was going to be Legends, Canadale Run are back far enough? That I'm not sure of. If they are not, they are improperly in the right-of-way and would be subject to moving, or the right-of-way is wide enough that we'd be able to accommodate. In a situation like that, we would look at, I'd look at the right-of-way in the Legends District to be similar to what we have in the downtown area. and. Where we, where we try to maintain a five foot sidewalk in residential areas unless we're at the back curb at which time it goes up to a six foot. In heavy pedestrian movement areas, we would look to make those sidewalks significantly wider. So anywhere from seven to 10 feet, and 10 feet being preferable. Okay, with that much width, you really only technically need three to four feet for ADA compliance. So if we had to narrow that sidewalk up as we get to the monuments and then widen out again, that's not a problem. We're well over the ADA requirements, and to the extent possible, we're providing the widest possible accommodation there. So something like that I would not be overly concerned with. There is a lot of discussion going on about how sidewalks should be uh, paid for in the future, and you know, if there was a change in policy, it may, uh, uh, it may be a consideration here. Uh, I, I don't know that if that will occur, so, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. The, uh, uh, the individual that brought this to Mr. Zima and it was at the uh, Bicycle, Pedestrian, and Traffic Commission uh, recognized that at some point sidewalks would be put in along there, but expressed the view that, uh, that he was hoping, and he thinks other business people are too, that uh, that uh, there would be more development uh, uh, occurring in that area before sidewalks would be installed. So, I don't know. My, th my thoughts would be that uh, 
you need more input as far as the, the landowners themselves. And, you know, the development hasn't occurred yet on most of these areas. I think that you know each landowner should be contacted and say, well, look, we're, this is a proposal to put sidewalks in for safety issues. And I think they should have a, a voice in you know either for it or against it, because you're you're looking at some serious dollars when you get into some of these the, the big plots of property. And uh, I think that you know each if we're going to you know recommend sidewalks, I think that the, the landowners have to be notified. And you know this is a proposal that's coming forward. And I think that you know the public input would be very helpful, especially the landowners themselves. Some people are deathly a, a opposed sidewalks. You know, even in the city, like Taylor Street over that area, there's a lot of young kids walking. Mark Stoyer's, you know, in his district there, they they didn't put the sidewalk in. Is that correct, Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. So there are issues about sidewalks. I think that you know the public has to be. We had quite a few people that came out on that on the Taylor Street issue that highly opposed to the sidewalks even though that you know you guys recommended that they go in so you know this is a commercial application I don't think they're going to strictly a commercial endeavor over there and it, it will be the the property owner that will be paying the full amount I'm sure uh, as far as you know the cost so they should uh, in my opinion they should all be notified and you know if they're going to bring this back otherwise I just recommend that we receive this and place it on file for right now I think we're only talking about a handful of businesses, really, right? You know, Burkles, Fabry, S. Saranac, and Badger Land Brewing, Farbs, called something else. So there's a hotel, Stadium View, and like the Casters on the ledge, a piece of that property. And we're just talking about Canadale, right? Are we also talking about Star and I would, I would be White? looking at Canadale, Star, and okay. White. Okay, something you have. Right. Oh, what are your wishes? I just is for right now. I'd say just receive a place on file at this time. You know, if they want to bring it back and talk more about it, I think you have to, you know, do more input as far as the, the landowners themselves. Yeah, I'll second the motion. There's a motion and a second to receive a place on file and discussion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number four, consideration with possible action on the request by Polynesia for additional overnight parking exemptions at 1064 <coughs> Roscoe. I would uh, Paul contacted me today. This to lives in my district, and he apologized. He'd asked just to hold this up till the next meeting. Move to hold till the next meeting. Second. Motion by Alderman Manning, second by Alderman Vandalis to hold. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Number six, consideration with possible action on 2018 Department of Public Works Equipment Acquisition Plan. Director. Uh, every year at about this time, we bring forward a copy of our capital. Uh, equipment replacement plan. <coughs> this is related to but separate from the budget issue. And the reason I say related to but separate from, there is a line item within the DPW budget uh, under the 101 fund that's called city equipment usage. And every time that we send equipment out the door to complete work uh, within the city, that account then gets charged and the money comes out of that account and goes into it, what we refer to as our 203 or capital equipment fund. Um, as the money accumulates in the 203 fund, for levy supported departments such as DPW's operations division, engineering division, and traffic division, so not parking or either of the uh, sewer utilities, our um, fuel, uh, fuel oil and lube equipment repairs, all of those expenses uh, come out of that 203 fund, as does um, our capital vehicle replacement. So many years ago, more than 20 years ago, uh, in an effort to try to make an objective way of scoring and ranking the, the criticality of replacing everything from uh, garbage trucks to front end loaders to our fleet sedans or SUVs for, for passenger transport. Uh, this scoring system was developed and it has been vetted through many people. Uh, you know, every couple of years we get some turnover on the Common Council and, and some folks who are new to the Council, you know, Alderman Vanderlees, for instance, maybe one, who, hey Steve, I'm not real familiar with the scoring, and we'll bring them in and we'll sit down and go through the scoring system uh, with folks. 
Um, I know a former alderman of Wisbisky was, uh, was, I think he was instrumental in helping either develop or he, he assisted in scoring yeah, vehicles for many years. Yeah. And he would testify to how complex the system was and, and what a good objective view um, that did. So that's just a little bit of a background. What, what we're doing here is we are breaking out what we consider to be the pieces of equipment we would like to replace in 2018, we get that approved uh, through the committee and the council, and this is presuming that funds are available after the budget process. Okay, so that's page one talks about operations division. When we go to page two, we talk about the sanitary sewer uh, district, their capital and uh, and their equipment, then the storm sewer. And then finally on page three, this is for information per, or this is a, uh, yeah, this. Page three should be parking. Parking, sorry. Okay. Uh, so again, this is funded out of a parking mm -hmm. to uh, capital account. <coughs> the last page is informational only. This you will see as individual items requested as part of the budget process, but just to keep a common document, we keep it all together. So again, with the vehicle equipment replacement on page one, presuming that the that funds exist as part of the budget process, our 101 fund, uh, the 55-130 line item, those monies get transferred over into the 203 account, presuming that that money does stays as part of the budget. Uh, we want you to know exactly what pieces of equipment we are looking to replace and what their approximate costs are so that I don't have to come back and get this list approved and then as we bid out each piece of equipment we have a report of the purchasing agent we approve it a third time we just we're looking to do this early rather than late and more than happy to answer any questions that anyone might have relative to the uh, we we are we, we kind of tried to come up with a cap and for lack of anything better taking a look at what we've spent in recent years what types and pieces of equipment might be necessary uh, for replacement and what the costs are trending towards which is not good um, we have have set the cap on capital or vehicle replacements at 1.2 million and that's where I would like to hold that cap that's for 2018, is that correct? Yeah, but okay. what I'm saying is going forward, I, I'm going to try to hold, 1.2 is my magic number. I'm, I'm going to try to hold our replacement equipment uh, for vehicles to 1.2 or less. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, it's getting tough. Our, our garbage trucks went up $18,000 a piece just in the last year. They were about 230 last year. So it, you know, uh, a, a loader is $205,000. That long line pavement marking machine, that's what we used to spray the, the lines mm -hmm. on, the, on the center of the road, at 380, almost $387,000. Thank God we only have to buy one of those every 15 to 20 yes. years. Yeah. It's just, unfortunately, my folks play with very, very expensive toys. The scoring is one to twenty. Is that yes, twenty. That top. Okay. I believe you have to be fourteen or. Yeah, you have to be up there above ten. It's, I think it's, it might be twelve is a kind of a marginal cutoff. Yeah, so we we typically did thirteen, fourteen, or less, and a lot of times you don't even make the list. In terms of the whole budget, does the city equipment usage uh, accounts go up by a certain percent? No. Okay. It's pretty much the same 2018. Well, I'll give you a little breakdown on that, but uh, last year, my equip city equipment usage, re my initial request was in the neighborhood of about $2.2 million. And that was to reflect increasing costs, especially on equipment, but also on fuel oil and little bit equipment repairs. Um, as part of 
the budget, what we agreed to do was we took about a half million dollars out and we bonded for two garbage trucks. Uh, because we are not bonding for the equipment this year, I have put that half million dollars back into operations. So I'm back up at about 2.2, okay. almost 2.3 million on equipment use next, uh, for this year. What is your total budget, Steve? What figures are you looking at for your total budget? Uh, give or take, I think I'm in about the 18, levy supported, I'm at about 18.4 million, give or take. Okay. I was trying to figure out why, okay, and if you want to have this real brief sidebar, it's really yes. not on the agenda. Um, I was planning on doing a director's report, but that's fine, right here is fine. Um, my numbers weren't jiving with finance, and I couldn't figure out what, I was off by about a little over $450,000 between myself and Diana, and it was all within operations division. And there are two different ways to query into the financial software, and when I went and did the deeper drill query, um, we have sub-accounts that roll up into bigger accounts, one of the sub accounts is the bridge tenders, okay? Bridge tenders actually count against my expenses, but they're 100% reimbursed. Like we had a discussion last year about yeah. police and fire overtime for Packer games because they're 100% reimbursed. But, you know, and I talked to Diane, uh, Director Ellenbecker about that, you know, should we maybe not include that? What she is fearful of, and I share her concern when she expressed, if we change our accounting procedures too much year to year, that raises a red flag with the Department of Revenue. And if we have always included that in our expenses, either we need to continue to do that, or as we're making the changes, we can't make a whole lot of wholesale changes in any one year. It just throws up way too many flags. So what my original number didn't drive with finance because I wasn't rolling the bridge tenders. And when I did, my, my number came up. I was at a closer to 18 million, not 18, 18.4, and Diana was at 18.4. Okay, it was the bridge tenders. Okay. And these are, give us a background of what, you know, what kind of money you're dealing with. And, you know, by all means, if, if anyone has, you know, we, we don't go to joint personal finance until the seventh. If anyone has questions about where my budget's at or, or what I would be requesting, by all means, I, I strongly encourage you to come in. Um, I'll get to the rest of it on the board, right? Okay. Any other questions on number six? To place it, uh, to uh, receive and place it. Well, actually, we would be looking for approval. Oh, of the plan. okay. Well, move to approve the uh, plan as proposed. Motion by Alderman Nene, second by Alderman Vanderleest, to approve the 2018 Department of Public Works Equipment Acquisition Plan. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number seven, consideration with possible action on 2018 Department of Public Works Equipment Acquisition. Or, <laughs> I'm mixing my lines here. Consideration with possible action and request on the court of the purchasing manager. All right, I'm thinking about blowing my nose. Sorry, Rick, all yours. The uh, first item on the purchasing report is a request to approve the purchase of traffic control equipment from TAPCO for $85,659. Um, we put this up for bid. TAPCO was the only respondent, uh, which has been the case uh, uh, for several years. They uh, um, uh, are the only people in the state that, that make the kind of equipment that we need. And um, we do an open competition, but they're the only people that respond. Um, the traffic engineers recommended the uh, award to TAPCO for the amount stated. Any questions? Is that strictly for traffic lights or what is it, actually controls? Or what yeah, these are the controls. And I think there might be, uh, 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 there's some poles in here um, and some signals, but the uh, majority of the cost is in the traffic control equipment. Okay. There, there's a couple of cabinets, so it's the, the large grade cabinet that all the equipment's in. Uh, inside that, there's a, programmable logic controller, which it's the brains that tells the signal when to switch. There's a couple of those. Uh, one vehicle detection system, so that's the eyes that the camera system that looks out. Uh, the preemption, if you look on the Monitube pole that sticks out, 
a lot of people think it's a camera, but it's smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the item that when fire department is coming up on the signal and they need to change it, they push the magic button under the dash, that's the preemption. Um, there's some pedestrian LED lights, 30 of those. Um, the wiring, about 2,000 feet of wiring. Uh, then 20, 13 foot poles and 20, 15 foot poles. Uh, those are what we call the type ones. So the near right, there's a stand up pole that has a vertical head on it as opposed to the monotube pole. So your near rights are your type ones. So that's the last on University Avenue there where they're redoing a lot of that as far as those traffic concerns? Oh, that's not being redone. Well, that's not being redone. Nope. Um, that's actually, we required the developer to get us functional signals. But we have certain requirements for the city that kind of go above and beyond that in how they communicate to each other. So we are going, we had the developer just get in there, get the signals built, make them operational. Now we're going back and we're plowing in the fiber optic cable to make them talk to each other. Okay. So that's us, that, that's always been anticipated. The costs that are reasonable compared to this year's costs? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this is consistent with. Okay. Yep. Right. 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 We can handle a motion on this one right away. Good. Motion to approve. Motion second. Alderman Vandalay, second Alderman Nenny to approve. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. B, request approval to purchase lift station pump from Xylem for uh, about $180,000. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, to, right? I'm going to defer yeah, to the director on yes. this. Um, uh, they requested a sole source, and there are some extenuating circumstances, which I'll let uh, okay. Director Grenier sure. explain. Mather Street is one of the projects we've got going uh, next year that's being a state-funded project. And with the interconnection between the Mather Street storm sewer and the Gray Street storm sewers, in order to get adequate coverage on Math or Street, we had to drop that storm sewer down low. That means we're bringing the storm sewer in below the level of the Gray Street sewer. So we need a lift station to get the water up in the grain. These lift stations are, you don't go to a book and pick out a lift station. Okay, so each one is individually designed. And then the pump systems that go along with that, there are a couple of different manufacturers that make the pumps. What we're looking to do is utilize a flight from Xylem, F-L-Y-G-T, flight pump system. Um, we have a number of sanitary and storm lift stations around the city that all utilize flight pumps. Uh, the benefit to doing that, um, flight has a repair facility in Pewaukee if we need to ship it out, which is closer than any of the manufacturers, so it's nice and close for repair or, or service work that needs to be done. By standardizing on a pump design or a manufacturer, our staff also gets familiar with those pumps and we can maintain that proficiency in diagnosing and maintaining those pumps here as opposed to having to learn several different manufacturers. Um, we're also familiar with the vendor staff and their contacts for any type of emergency repairs a lot of times if we're working on something uh, because these things never break down at, you know, 10 o'clock on a Tuesday, they always break down at midnight on a Sunday or something like that. Um, a lot of times we're out working in the dark on them and we'll run into something, we can call flight up right away and actually diagnose or work cooperatively by phone with their staff. Um, they also maintain inventory at their facility uh, down near Milwaukee, which means we don't have to maintain parts and inventory up here. We're nice and close and so we can have stuff here within a matter of hours. So uh, we did prepare a memo uh, for the purchasing and uh, explained all these things uh, about why we had requested to utilize a flight pump uh, in support of our, our request for a sole source. So staff would recommend uh, to award a sole source based on a flight pumping system. Uh, we have not gone out for the actual quote, but based on budgetary estimates, we are estimating this to be in about the $180,000 range. Uh, and funding would come from the storm sewer utility Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Alderman Vanderlei, second by Alderman Any One discussion? Quick question for Steve. Vanderlei. Steve, was any of the money that was allotted, uh, allocated from the Packer for that lift station, was any of that money going to be used uh, from that source or not? I don't believe that was targeted on this one. The money that came out of the uh, stadium district excess 
uh, was targeted towards a lift station down on Broadway that's mm -hmm. currently under design. That's good. Thank you. This was anticipated to be part of the Mather Street constru reconstruction. Yeah. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. That's number seven. Thank Thanks, you. sir. Number eight, consideration with possible action on the review and award of the contract painting Green Bay Metro Canopy, 2017. This one I have to apologize a little bit about. Uh, typically, contracts through Green Bay Metro are actually awarded by the Transit Commission. Mm -hmm. So this one got onto our agenda a little bit by mistake. Uh, we had considered whether or not we wanted to take it off, and I said, no, it's good information for the committee to know, to at least yeah. to know where, where bids are trending and, and things of that nature. Uh, so we did have two bids received yesterday. Uh, Mill Coatings Incorporated came in at $155,770. Uh, even the high bid from Quality Sandblasting and Coatings LLC at 170625 uh, was a fantastic bid. So we were very pleased with both bids uh, and just wanted to make you aware that we had uh, Two competent bidders, uh, very good pricing, and this will be going on to uh, Transit Commission for their review and award. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our motion be to approve it and to forward it to the Transit Commission. For I think a receiving place on file and the report of the bids received would be appropriate. Okay, I'll move to receive it and place it on file. Second. Motion by Nenig, second by Vanderlis to receive and place on file. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number nine, consideration with possible action on the application for a tree and brush trimmer license by Brickyard Contracts. They've held the license with us uh, within the last 10 years, have yes, done an acceptable have. job, so we would recommend approval. Move to approve. Second by Nenig, second by Vanderlis to approve. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number 10, director's report of recent activities. Of the Department. Uh, two items for you. First one we touched on a little bit, uh, and that would be our budget. Uh, I do have a budget submitted in to the mayor. We have made every reduction that I can feel comfortable with, and actually a few that I don't. Uh, beyond this point, uh, I think you heard this from Director Kramer previously, uh, any, re any further reduction in, in the budget uh, is going to translate into a reduction in services. It's, we're not at a point where we can do more with less anymore. Less money means less service. It's just, it's that easy. Uh, I would be expecting an announcement of a budget open house. I do think the mayor intends to have another open house like he's had the past couple of years. Uh, if you have any specific questions, uh, feel free to contact me. What I can tell you is, unlike, potentially, unlike some other departments, um, my budget as submitted is pretty much what you see in the mayor's budget from what I, from what I know. That's, that's what I, I believe that to be 100% true. Um, the reason for that is in spite of uh, the class comp study and you know when I saw the numbers coming out that finance had posted, I looked and saw what those what the impact of salary and fringe was going to be for those decisions and thought, oh God, I knew where we were last year. I knew there was about two and a half million in shortfall because of you know where we ended last year. I sat on Alderman Vanderlee's task force, so I knew you know kind of some of the concerns that were that were out there. So I made some pretty drastic concessions before I even submitted my budget. Um, one of the things. Chris and I talked about at length um, contracted services. I have cut a couple hundred thousand out of contracted services. And that, that's the money we use to pay contractors to come in and plow streets for us primarily. That's, that's the biggest chunk of that money. Um, when we run through our spreadsheets on what we should budget in that account, and then I take a look at what we've paid over the last couple of winters, there's a bust there, okay? So I'm gonna roll the dice and only budget what we've paid over. And Chris is fond of telling me all the time, Steve, hope is not a strategy, but I'm, that's what I'm using right now. I'm, I'm going to roll the dice and hope that we have another mild winter. If we don't have a mild winter, I am going to come up short on that account. I'm going to run it into the red because I'm not going to not plow. And I'm going to have to find a way to make that money up. On okay. the west side. There, it's after. And, and hope, hope that the storm <laughs> runs out of steam as it no, comes across. <laughs> uh, one of the other things, one of the biggest concessions that we did make this year, um, 
we have been pretty vocal the last couple of years saying that my staff is taxed. You know, the engineering staff is taxed out. Uh, we simply can't do any more with the staff that we've got if we're going to be doing more, any more staff. Um, last year I was going to put a, an engineer into the budget and because of the budget conditions I elected not to do that uh, with the understanding that it would be given serious consideration this year. I did not put that engineer back into the budget this year either. I know it's one thing to want something, it's one thing to need something, but when I look at the budget and realize there's simply not enough money to go around, I'm not going to ask for something that, no matter how badly I need it, I'm not going to ask for something that can't be funded. So I didn't. Um, again, electricians. I need another electrician. I didn't put it in again this year. So I already made some pretty serious concessions. It, operations division, I think, I think my entire operations budget is about a half million dollars higher than the 17 budget, and almost all of that can be traced back to the increase in city equipment usage. So I was able to shave off enough in other places to offset salaries and fringes. Uh, engineering, I don't have enough big dollar expenses like that to do it, so I'm up a little bit, I'm up probably 2%, 2.3% in engineering and, and, uh, and traffic. Um, parking division, I was pretty pleased. Uh, we came up pretty close. We're being a little on the conservative side because what we found out a year or two ago was that um, we had Humana moved out. And that was a mass. That was 360 some stalls or something that we 400. Uh, yeah, that we rented on a, on a monthly one. basis. That was a huge financial hit. So uh, we are counting. Uh, you folks did uh, pass the the agreement with uh, with Imperial uh, Granger. So we are counting on them being here. I've got an executed agreement with those folks. Um, but we did bring the parking proposed parking rates a couple of meetings ago, and we're holding the line on parking and feel pretty good that uh, we're going to be able to, to close our books in. Now, how we about hold? the counties? Uh, in other words, the county has some, uh, they rent, rent some space from the city, is that correct? I don't think the county There are different uh, departments that, that rent some space uh, on behalf of their employees, okay. so they do payroll deduction, but the employee, the individual employees... Yeah, it's actually the employees. The what about the uh, spaces for where they pay the taxes on... Uh, are they going to work with them on that this year? As far as on the on street during tax collection yeah. season, yes. So they are, they're not paying for those. But we, we they rent the hoods. I don't think they're paying for the hoods. I think that was a demand from county that we provide that at no charge to them. I know they were talking. They were talking about you know in other words. I I can check I can check into it for you, but I believe the county demanded that we provide those at no cost. Okay. But I know they wanted like six spaces, you know, mm -hmm. some of those spaces in front there. And it does, it does help because they have a lot of traffic there and a lot of older folks, you know, if they can park right in front, it's a big plus. So I think the city was trying to, you know, work with the county and trying to make some, some kind of a concession that, you know, they collect the taxes and, you know, so then it's a, it's a service to the city as well. So. Uh, but again, any questions you have relative to the budget, I'm more than happy to sit down and talk through that. Uh, the other big item that uh, comes up at this time is leaves. We have finished our second round of leaves. Um, we do realize many trees around the area have not dropped their leaves yet. We, we know that. Uh, we've had an unseasonably warm fall up until just a couple of days ago, it was 70 degrees. We do need about three weeks from the time we start converting the fleet from summertime to winter operations, getting blades on, getting spreader boxes installed in the back. Uh, it takes about three weeks to convert the fleet and we can't convert it halfway and then stop and try to double clutch and, and rethink our, uh, our situation. Um, we will complete at least five rounds, but the end date will remain November 12th. I just, I simply cannot jeopardize going beyond that date and getting caught with my fleet not in winter mode. Now, that's the official, okay? If we have extended warm periods and leaves haven't fallen, but the bulk of them are down, okay? If we can fit it into our schedule, I still will have tractors out 
and I because the tractors are quick to convert mm -hmm. and I have old retired from frontline service rear loading garbage tracks that we call our pans mm -hmm. we'll still have tractors and pans available so on spot duty or on catch as catch can we will attempt to still continue to go beyond November 12th if we have to but citywide the big day it's November 12th and that's it we're done I, I can't I just I can't guarantee anything beyond that mm -hmm. and if God God forbid <laughs> the leaves are on the ground November 12th comes and we've converted over also we get hit with a freak early snowstorm we wind up with piles of snow on top of the leaves out in the street we wind up plowing it back in the terrace then we're not going to use the pans either and we'll get them in the spring Okay. We'll do the best we can. That's like ten years ago or something. Yeah, it's, it's happened. <laughs> it's, it's happened multiple times. We don't like it anymore. Than else. That, of course, <laughs> but we can't yeah. control it. Yeah. Predict mother nature. Yes, I said that conversation earlier today with some folks. All right. Thank so that's it. Thank you, director. Any questions? Would you receive a place on file with the district court? File magnetics. File vandalism. To receive a place on file. Discussion. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second by Alan Vandalese. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We're adjourned.